Hey, what's up, everybody? This is episode 219 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, I'm going to talk about Whistlekick, how we got started with the sparring gear, and don't tune out yet. If that's not something that you're interested in, this is actually going to be more of a business lesson, kind of a, a intersection of Whistlekick and how we got started and some of the things that I learned. So if you're interested in Whistlekick or sparring gear or business or maybe my voice just helps you fall asleep, you'll want to stick around. If you're new to the show, if maybe you've had an aneurysm lately, my name's Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel, and we do everything that we can to move the martial arts world forward. You can check out our gear, you can check out our podcast, you can check out everything we do. The hub for us online, our digital home, is whistlekick.com. The show notes, the other episodes for this are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. So what's the story behind Whistlekick gear? And that's really the story of Whistlekick. Because Whistlekick's first stuff, our first products, our first goals were all around our line of sparring gear. If you're not familiar with our gear, again, you can check it out online, whistlekick.com. But we make a type of protective foam gear that's fairly standard, excuse me, standard in the sport martial arts world. A lot of schools use it for training internally. You know, it's it's your kind of standard slip-on gloves, boots, helmet, and shin guard based around a foam design. And, well, I was tired of what was out there. I would buy gear and it would fall apart within a few months. And that really stunk. You know, it, it didn't seem to matter what company I bought it from. It didn't matter how much I spent on it. So I just resigned myself to do what it seems so many others do. I bought the color that I liked and wore it until I felt I'd got my money out of it, which was usually far too long. And then I would repeat the process. And I would come home from class and I would think, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be somebody out there making better gear. So I'd grab a beer out of the fridge and sit at my computer this is like 2008, and I wasn't finding anything. And I would look at the new products from the bigger companies and see that they really weren't that different. And I would get to try them out because somebody at the school or at a tournament would have them, and I'd look at them and see, it's just a gimmick. They're not really different. Where's the improvement? Where is the, the growth, the progress that we're taught to have as martial artists? As martial artists, everything we do is supposed to get better, right? And it seemed like it was actually going in the other direction. And I didn't know what to do. And one of my mentors, because I had another business, I had an IT business, for those of you that may not know, one of my mentors, I, I mentioned this to him, and he said, well, you know, check it out, see what you can find, see if there's a prototyping company out there. And I looked and looked, and I couldn't find any prototyping companies that worked in these sorts of materials, the foam stuff. Well, the short version, he did. He found a company out in the Midwest, and I spent a couple years working with them, coming up with designs. And to be honest, everything they came up with was terrible. But they did do one thing. They connected me with the perfect factory. Now, if you know me or if you've listened to this show for a while, you probably get the sense that I like knowing the people I do business with. If you've ever emailed in, if you've ever purchased a product from us, I've got a lot of involvement in that. And I'm going to do that as long as I possibly can because this is my business. And it means a lot to me. So it means a lot to me when the people I'm doing business with have the same mindset. And this factory that I found was just over the border from the U.S. into Mexico. I could not find, the prototyping firm could not find, a factory that could scale to what we needed in the United States. And I've got some theories on why it has to do with with, uh, a little bit of labor cost, but it's actually more regulatory stuff with with, uh, chemicals and whatever. And uh, I, I I won't go too much into that. But the bottom line is I found a factory owned by a brother and sister just a few hours over the border from Texas. So I went there and we spent a couple days hand cutting foam and 
trying things out. And my Spanish is okay, but it's not great. And the two owners, they speak good English. So I would sit in the break room, which was the only air conditioned space in the whole facility. And one of the owners would come in and we'd sit down and talk and we'd sketch something out or we'd cut something out. And then he would call the floor foreman up and he'd show it to him and he'd give him the instructions in Spanish. And the foreman would look at it and say, what, really? You know, it was in Spanish, but I could still tell he thought I was nuts. He didn't get it because he wasn't a martial artist. He was just comparing it to the other stuff that they make for other companies. And after three days, I left. I flew home from Mexico. And a couple months later, the pre-production, the hand-cut test units showed up at my house. The first whistle kit gear was there. And I tried it on. And it was great. And that gear is what I'm still wearing today, five years later. Now, I don't wear it every day. I don't even wear it every week. But I continue to wear it for a couple of reasons. It means a lot to me, emotionally. This was the very first gear that I made. And secondly, to continue to test and see how it holds up. Are there some scuffs and some rips on it? Absolutely. But it still works, and it still looks far better than most other gear after just couple months. One of the questions I get, why Mexico? Why not China? Why not Hong Kong, Taiwan? Why not one of these countries that has even lower labor costs that would be able to make stuff admittedly less expensive? I could sell it for less or more likely just make more on each unit. Well, it's my business philosophy. I like being able to email or to go visit these folks and say, here's what I need and know that they're going to be there in a few months. They've been my only factory from day one, and I'm loyal to them, just as I'm loyal to the other people who have treated me well. Things have gone on. They've, they've bent some rules for me, and I appreciate that. One of my favorite quotes, and I, I might get it a little bit wrong, but Abraham Lincoln said, I've never had a policy. I've just always done what's felt right at the time. And that's what these folks have done for me, and that's what I try to do in business. I try to do what feels right, whether that's someone who, you know, orders gear and, and even though we don't have a warranty, somehow maybe some defect creeps in or something, you know, I'm going to do what I can to make it right because that's how I was taught. That's how business should be. Business is incredibly personal to me. You all can probably tell that. I want to talk about some of the features of the gear and I'm going to try not to make this too commercially and all, but it's important. It's important to understand my mindset and why this stuff needed to be better, why that was so important to me. If you take a look at our gear, we use a better quality foam. It holds up, as I said, five years. That foam is still pliable after five years. And if you have gear from other companies, you've probably seen that it rarely holds up that long. It starts to degrade. And those materials that can't bend or flex or squish, they crack, they break they flake. And that's when it starts to fall apart. That's not good. It's not safe. It's not comfortable. It's probably the comfort that's the most important part. And in fact, when I go to events, I still go to events. I'm still there. Not always by myself, but usually if we're set up at an event, it's me behind the table. And so I get to size people up. I get to put gear on them. And one of my favorite things is small kids. Small kids whose parents say they don't even like to wear pants when they're running around the house don't want to take off whistle kit gear because it's that comfortable. It's such a departure from what they're used to. I wear a large helmet. I could wear everything from a small all the way up to an extra large because it's that squishy. And not that I should wear a small because it looks funny. And it's not really safe, but it, I can make it fit. What else do we do? Uh, All the common places where it tears, we put in double reinforcement. We cut as many ventilation holes as we could. We used a better Velcro. There's more vinyl coating on it. And really, it's all about two pieces, durability and comfort. How do we make it better? How do we make all of these things just a little bit better? And are there ideas for improving it even more? Absolutely. There will be new versions of Whistlekick gear coming out at some point. I don't know when. 
right now we're busy rolling out colors. Let's see. Can I say what? It's hard to say. There are two new colors coming right about the time this episode is going to come out. I'm not going to say them yet. One of them is a color that many of you have been asking for. And the other is a color that you didn't even know you wanted. It's amazing. It's nobody has a color like this. It's gorgeous. It's not one of the blends like the Horizon or the Shark Skin Limited Editions we did. But this is an awesome color. You're going to love it. The boots, the biggest thing we've become known for in the sparring gear world is we don't have a toe strap. It's that elastic strap that holds it on. Without the toe strap, you can keep your weight in the balls of your foot. You can move a little bit more dynamically. It's closer to training barefoot. And if you know me, I don't like wearing shoes in general. So having boots that are closer to barefoot is great. About 19 out of every 20 people love it. Once in a while we get somebody who misses the toe strap. That's fine. We don't need to make gear for everyone. We just want to make the best gear we can. Our gloves, the wrist is chopped shorter. The helmet, there's a cutout for people with long hair. That's not me, but I wanted to make sure that was in there. And the shins are both double thick and they're already curved so they don't slide around as much like the flat ones. Now, what's the result of all that? The average lifespan of other gear, you know, just from what I've worn and from talking to other people, seems to be six to 12 months. Really should be three to six months for people that are using it frequently, but people will make it last because, you know, stuff costs money. Our lifespan, over three years. We sponsor enough athletes at this point that I get gear coming back. And I know how often these people are training and competing, and I know how long this stuff's lasting. And some of our most active athletes are getting three to four years out of gear which tells me that the average martial artist is going to get at least that. And that makes me happy. Is our gear the least expensive option? No, it, it can't be. It just it's, It is not possible because of what we're putting into it. But nor should it be. Because what we make over the long haul, over the entire time that it's used, is going to cost you less. If you can buy something that lasts three years, and even if it's, and it's not, but let's say it was Twice as much as something that lasts one year, well, you're still spending less money over time. What we see, and this is kind of new, and this is fun to see, I, I didn't expect this. Parents of small children, their kids are outgrowing our gear. It's going to happen. But it's still holding up so well that they're selling it to somebody else in the school. It looks that good. That's so cool. I've never seen that before seen it once in a while. Oh, my kid trained for oh, a month and didn't like it. Okay, but this is six to 12 months in and the gear's holding up that well. So I take that as an immense compliment. Does it mean we lose a sale? Yeah, short term, but long term makes people happier. And that's my business philosophy. I'm not interested in short term dollars. There are plenty of things. There are plenty of ideas, plenty of business opportunities. People come to us and want me to do this or that to make a few bucks? I could. The number of sponsorship opportunities we have with this show? How many commercials do you hear? You hear me talk about Whistlekick a little bit. Why? Because this is a Whistlekick show. And because long term, I want all of you to be on board with this movement in the martial arts to bring some unity and grow the martial arts. Get more people training. That's one of my missions probably my biggest mission. I have the best job in the world. I get to make stuff that people love. I get to do this podcast that continues to grow, that's listened to in over 130 countries. Martial artists all over the world are tuning in and checking out what we're doing. And that just blows me away. And that's thanks to all of you, because as longtime listeners know, this show, the format of this show, Everything has been shaped by your feedback. To me, this is service in the martial arts industry. I'm leading the charge. But I know a lot of you have the same goals. You love to train. You love to get better. And that's what Whistle Kick is about. Training, getting better, bringing people together. 
having some fun. If you're in the New England area or if you are up for making a trip, October 28th, we're going to be having our second annual free martial arts training day. And you can find information on that at martialartsweekend.com or at our Facebook page. We've got the event up there. That's a bit of a tangent, but that's okay. Because it's another example of how Whistlekick gets to give back. We're not charging people for that event. We just want to bring people together and share some stuff. Different people teaching different sessions, you know, kind of like a, it's a seminar day. But just trying to stuff as much goodness into it as we can. What's next here at Whistlekick? Adding projects and things all the time. MarshallJournal.com is semi-live at the point that I'm recording this. And hopefully we will have some real content right now. It's just some dummy content up there. But MarshallJournal.com, you can check that out. If you want to write for it, if you want to get other people to help write for it, we're looking for writers. We're not going to pay you. No one is getting paid out of this project. It's just, it's kind of the same philosophy as free martial arts training day. There are people out there that write some great martial arts stuff and we want to help feature that. So check it out, share it, whatever. What else is next? New types of gear. So for those of you that don't play in the the ITF Taekwondo or the the sport karate world, or, you know, you use maybe your, your Olympic Taekwondo or you do some different style gear, it's coming. We will make it. Should I promise? I'll promise. I promise we will make your gear. More colors. More accessories. There's so much stuff on the way right now. The the pile of prototypes is is a little unwieldy. So my takeaways for you out of this episode, the things that I want you to remember, it's not about the features of the gear. If we earn your business as a customer, great. But that's not why I'm doing this episode. That's not what this show is about. This isn't a commercial. It's about my philosophy with business and how it fits so tightly with my philosophy on martial arts. To work hard, to get better, to work with people that you respect, that have integrity, and to find new and creative ways to get the job done. Those Ideas apply equally to business and the martial arts. And the last idea, do something you're passionate about. If you're not passionate about your work, if you're not passionate about your training, make a change. That could be a change in your head. That could be a change in life, in the more practical logistical stuff, whether that's training in a new school or a new time of day, new training partners, a new job starting your own business, a lot of options there, a lot of possibilities, and I hope you will take every one of them that you can to live the best life that you have available to you. That's all for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.